Scotland Yard. As usual, a little bit late, but hey, who cares? We have our yeah. very special guest today in the breakfast show. <laughs> if you'd like to introduce yourself, my friend. Yeah, I'm David Camilli. I'm a guitarist. I'm a guitarist, musician. I was classically trained, let's say, in Milan. Uh, even if my, let's say, formal education... Uh, it, I have a degree in, um, in music performance, in electric guitar here in, uh, in UK. And uh, after working with several bands, I did a little bit of session musician in UK and Italy. And then I began to work on my first album. Um, my first single uh, uh, actually was in 2018, and it was Courage. And now, now I have another single on Spotify, uh, which I really like, even if, yeah, even if I, of course, I could do it, I, I could do it better if I had a better, uh, let's say, uh, um, production. But mm, yeah, I'm pretty satisfied this time. The, the first single, yeah, it was okay. This time it's better, I think. And uh, <laughs> this, yeah, the, this new single is called Forme Uniche nella continuità dello spazio. Is an Italian title. Yeah, because yeah. you're you're overseas right now. You're originally from Italy, you said, or Spain yeah. was it? Italy? Uh, M- Milan, Italy. Oh, yeah. Okay. Italy. Yep. Milan, Milan. And uh, yeah, maybe you mentioned Spain because I th- there are some Spanish influences in uh, in my style because when I was studying classical guitar. In Milan, at the Academia Civica, uh, I saw that some composers, they even if they were classical composers, they they look into what the folk music at the time, which was flamenco. So I played a bit of flamenco as well, or uh, I look into the baroque music influences by the popular music, the flamenco. So uh, yeah, I had quite an interest in, the, in that kind of general yeah <laughs> so you've been pretty busy lately then with uh, everything going on um we touched base a little bit you're in the process of building a little we re- um say recording studio or yeah, like a yeah program? i want to yeah i'm uh, i'm working on on the on that thing and i'm trying to get better resources i have to figure out figure out better uh low and uh in UK and uh, and how to to do it, how to do it, uh, how to do uh, for what is regarding the legal stuff, or uh, mm. uh, rather than uh, yeah, oh, right permits on. or something like that. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, so I, I'm still figuring out to be to 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 mm-hmm. be honest. It's yeah. All new, right? All new. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I want to do right. it. Yeah, I want to do it the right way because a lot, a lot of people started things here and then they 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 forced to close, which could happen, of course. And but I'm trying to do to do it the best way I can. So yeah. No, that's <laughs> excellent, man. It's good to see you're busy and you're staying up on top of everything. Yeah, that's my problem. Too many things. Yeah, I like to build guitar <laughs> as well. Sometimes I build some guitars. I, I work as a repair music uh, guitarist. A reserve, mm-hmm. Sorry, guitar repair. And uh, so I have a little bit of uh, expertise myself in uh, building or repairing the guitars. And I, I also like to paint. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if uh, I have Kyle, something yeah. even in the wall. I, yeah. <laughs> Something I painted when I was in actually uh, I also oh, went wow. to school in uh, oh, wow. Brera in Milan in Milan. That's very so, good, man. Yeah, but I didn't finish that because then the music t- took over and uh I decided <laughs> that music was the thing. I, I like to paint, but I don't love it, let's say. Yeah. I like yeah. it. Don't, I don't you like to it. paint, but you love to play. Pardon? I said, you like to paint, but you love to play? Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I, got it. I got it. I'm a writer. I understand that. Yeah, yeah you, you, sometimes you have, you have the thing, yeah. the main thing. Even if you're fairly good in, in doing other things, but maybe, but you don't love it as much as you, 
still have interest yeah. in art. That's yeah. why I named this uh, this new single Forme Unica della Nella Continuità dello Spazio, which is a statue, actually. It's a title of a statue by Umberto Boccioni, who was a, a futurist uh, um, sculptor and painter. And another thing I did, when I was <laughs> back in Milan, to have an ac better access to art while I was studying, I also work as a garden museum. So I, I saw a lot of exhibitions. And uh, even if I like art very much, sometimes, you know, you have the long shift. You, maybe one exhibition, you like it, the, the, the next one, a little bit less, or you get bored of, even if they're awful master, uh, oh, oh, sorry, terrific uh, masterpieces. But sometimes yeah. you, you, uh, you just get tired because you have long shift, you have to be sharp and, con and check that everything is going okay. But w when I pass by that statue, every time I saw something new, I was always thrilled. And uh, when they assigned me then, then the ex exhibition, I was so thrilled. It's a little statue, it's not a big statue, but in the... it tells a lot. And so after, mm -hmm. after years, uh, I was thinking back in the day when I was working in the museum and I had these uh, uh, terrific memories of, about working there. And so I, I named the statue Forme Uniche Nella Continuità del Spazio. <laughs> I think in English it could be translated like unique shapes in the continuity of the space, something like that. It's a weird title, oh. but... Oh, wow. <laughs> that's interesting. No, that's a pretty um, awesome little uh, concept and uh, putting it all together into a song. Yeah. Yourself, that's pretty cool, man. Yeah, because when I... Yeah, basically when I, let's say, compose music, I have a, this kind of a visual approach, even if we're talking about music. Uh, mm -hmm. It's weird to say, but I like to imagine things. That's why I like music, I guess, because he, with the music, let's say I, I, had, I introduce a bit of uh, samba or bossa nova, like, like sort of Latin vibe, can be immediately transported, I don't know, in a uh, jazz scene on, in, in the 50s or in the in a rock uh, scene in the 70s, like Santana or in Mexico or oh. something. Like that. So music is a way to to be transported in, an, uh, in another time, maybe, or in another place. It's a way, it's a way to travel for me, uh, mm. even with the styles, because if I use a, a I don't know, a, a, I make reference of a particular classical period, that, then I... I immediately, I am immediately transported in that kind of period, and I almost could see it. And with and art, of course, it helps you because uh, uh, when you see a, a painting, you are also visually transported in the, that kind of period. So I, mm. I tend to link all together: what is visual, what is uh, no. connected with the audio or something like that. I'm audio, really, yeah, like. Yeah, I find that I too, especially it. when I'm looking at gorgeous artwork and stuff. It kind of just sucks me right in, and, and you almost become almost where the pain is, you know. And I like you can physically, almost physically, be there in a sense, like you're saying there. Yeah, exactly. That, that's exactly what I, what I, yeah, yeah, what, what I felt when I, or what what I feel when I'm composing and looking at paintings, uh, and. This whole mix it really transformed me in another world. It's a way to, I don't know, I don't know, even travel in time, not only travel in, pay, in, uh, in, uh, in, in uh, space, like you say, travel in time. Yeah. Yeah, you need to transport it in, a, in another era, let's say. Yeah. And it, it's what really still uh, um, amused me. And uh, yeah, and it, it's a surprise all the time. When I'm composing something, for me, it's not like 
oh, look what I did or something. Because it, for me, it's almost like, oh, look what, mm -hmm. what is happening right now. It's like I'm discovering something rather than, than properly creating, let's say. Yeah. yeah. Same process, like discovering place, discovering people. And even the music itself, when it's, for me, it's like I'm discovering something that is like I'm, I'm testifying or I'm, I'm watching the process of watching some, something that is happening right now, and then rather than something I'm creating right now. Yeah, that's I see. I see the I see the the process of. I was gonna plug this in. Yeah. No, I uh, that oh, totally makes cozy. sense. Cause sort of the same way. I'm a bit of a fucking art freak in that sense where. I do like going to the museum, the art museum, you know, seeing all the paintings and the sculpture. And generally after I've done that for the day, like I always end up writing a new song or coming up with a new riff when I get home, you know, it's always a good inspiration, right? Exactly. 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 That's, this, that's the same for me. Yeah. Because it, no, that's awesome. uh, yeah. it's, uh, as I mentioned before, it's like you found something and then you, 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 it's like you, it's like for a kid when uh, they got a new toy. I, I, I had mm. this idea or I saw this painting and I have this sparkle of an idea. And then I get, go home excited and then I want just to play with it. Yeah, let's say. <laughs> yeah. Have fun Fair with it. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> See what it can, what it can do. Like, yeah. Mm hmm like, no, that's hey, yeah, like uh, you have a new toy and you want to see what it can do. Or, or <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sometimes no, it's exactly. like that. Sometimes it's a, it's, it's a little bit... Now, of course, it's not always a bed of roses. Sometimes I got stuck. Sometimes I had need to explore. It's like when you have... Yeah, let's say it's like when you have a new toy and you're a kid and you start to... Uh, how can I say? You're not, you start to... Putting apart your toy to see the mechanic oh. of it, uh, yeah, yeah, mm. to under get a better understanding. And then maybe you are a little bit upset because you destroyed the toy, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so Sometimes true. <laughs> I, I got stuck, so I tried. I I start to explore many possibilities. Many uh, sometimes I got confused. And sometimes I'm uh, then I leave the, the, that particular work on a side for a while. Yeah. And uh, when I come back with a clear mind, uh, then, then, then it's all clear and then can go on. A little I have more to say, the, the now, beautiful right? sunset in Brighton, when we were setting up, we, we discussed a bit. It helps a lot because sometimes I walk on the beach, you know, you look at the sea, no obstacles, no, it clears my mind and I can think better. And then I can come back with ideas. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you if you experience something like that yes <laughs> quite often you know like yep. it, it could be something as simple as fucking seeing uh, architecture on a new building that i've just drove through a new city and then all of a sudden yeah. you know or it's that yeah. statue that they have downtown that all of a sudden i actually took the time to sit and look at it and realize oh fuck look at this you know like yeah a lot of people don't stop and actually look around themselves and see how much inspiration and how much is around you to, to like, um, ah, fuck, how do I even say that? <laughs> to well, inspire people, you to do, do better, and, you know? Yeah, people, people don't always realize what they have right in front of them. Like, I live in the middle, well, I live like five minutes away, actually, from Niagara Falls. And I'm one of 150,000 people, particularly in this city, that get to wake up to that place every single day. And um, yeah, sure, tourism is a lot, you know, it gets busy down here and stuff like that, but that's what the city is, you know? And I, I am lucky that I grew up with an appreciation for that. When I go down there, that's usually when I get the most inspiration. You can stand like literally a few feet away from the brink of the falls, and it's, it's magnetic. It's, it literally draws you in. So it's, it's, it's something for inspiration as far as you guys talking about where you draw your inspiration from. The falls <laughs> is where I get it from sometimes. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, to I totally understand you guys. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's the same thing. Yeah. Like him with the statue or 
uh, yeah or you, yeah it's it's sometimes yeah you we have so much and we can see it in front of us and we can we can't really see it. I, i'm talking about myself as well because sometimes i i think i would travel a little bit more even if i lived in sweden i lived in italy um i'm living here in in your cave yeah um so and I, i traveled a bit but sometimes i i go i, I go in around the corner and i see things and i say oh yeah that was literally in the back of my house <laughs> and uh i, I never t- took a chance to really um yeah to, to really appreciate it mm-hmm. uh, appreciate it yeah I, I don't know why, because uh, yeah, of course you are, you are. Everyone of us is struggling with our day by day life, and so oh, yes. maybe yeah, yeah uh-huh. we are. Uh, yeah, we we have a lot of distraction. Let's say, <laughs> oh, but, unfortunately, we don't have the time all, all the time to go around and really uh, make hours what we see, what we see or really go in in a deeper mood or because so which is just which is a sort of meeting meditating act for me let, let's say oh. i cannot really yeah i can because i i, I cannot really stay that much uh, i don't know or uh, being i ca- can't see myself stay in a position even if i practice kendo which is a martial art in which we had a little bit of meditation but i'm not mm-hmm. sort of the guy who can stay one hour in a position and uh, <laughs> I, I rather uh, I rather uh, find my way to me in uh, I rather to find my way for meditating in a, in a particular set of mind when I'm working on things when I'm working on a guitar with a repetitive job or when I look into a nat- onto the nature and to the city and uh, and I got absorbed in my my mind is a little bit more clear because the all the the thinking um, that I'm doing during the day, which is my, maybe more practical or sometimes even 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 unnecessary. We have a lot of yeah. I know unnecessary thinking that sometimes it's even not good for uh, for ourselves. That's why we we need to meditate. But anyway, I. I took in, uh, I take inspiration, and uh, sometimes I really see uh, um, exploring what is the, the world around me, or uh, or exploring with the music or the activity that I'm doing, like drawing, or, yeah. uh, rather than than uh, than playing, like a sort of medit- meditating meditative act. Let's say, let's say. I don't know if you yeah. if you see a little bit also. What you do in that kind of I don't know because yeah everyone has his own his own way to con- conceive the the uh, your, your I know the word you're looking practice. for <laughs> mm. so uh, yeah I mentioned Kendo mm-hmm. I mentioned Kendo because another piece of music uh, I did which is completely different. Uh, from what I did uh, in uh, Courage or in Forme Unique is uh, The Way of the Sword, which is a, Jap- a, a let's say a, a piece inspired by Japanese music. And that's for two reasons. The first one is that I joined a, a kind of club some years ago and uh, I started a practice and I met Japanese people and, and uh, another friend of mine also uh, is a, an amazing musician. He's not a professional because he he, he, he did another job, but he he was moved in uh, Japan. He moved in Japan uh, for working reason, and then he started to we started to to chat about it, what it was like living there. But yeah, that's another place in which I want to live. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, we started to, to, to speak about Japan, and then this thing uh, grew a little bit uh, further. And then I, we, we did this piece together. He does electronic music. His, uh, his name is Talawertz, and uh, he's, uh, 
he's a good musician as well. He's he also played the tabla, India tabla. It's amazing. He's an amazing oh. drummer with, with, with the traditional drum set. And uh, there's a, this in this piece. There's is electronic music, which is something that I don't do usually. I'm not saying that I don't like it, but it's not not Good. just yeah. Even if I with my music, I uh, I cover a lot of genre, uh, but electronic little bit mess. A little bit less, sorry. And uh, mm-hmm. it, the, the name is The Way of the, Sw- the Sword because it was inspired by Kendo initially and, uh, uh, and from uh, the discipline and the meditative, meditative uh, side of the, of the practice. And uh, he joined me in the, with this piece, uh, with this electronic uh, contribution, which work, work, uh, works strange, strangely in my scene. At least for me, because I I never thought I could do something like that. It it, it, it worked, and uh, yeah. actually I, I I like the piece. I even listen myself is because <laughs> I you listen to your own music. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's so weird that, to re-listen to your music, or even for us, like for me to rewatch the show. I'm like yeah. I can't do it, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, he leaves it to me to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But um, so. No, that I, I can understand that though. We it's funny though because sometimes we're our biggest we're our own biggest fans and we're our own worst critics at the same time. We love what we do, but we don't want to give it to everybody because it's not perfect. Right? Or at least we, we think it's perfect, but we don't think it'll be perfect to them. Right? Like I've written three thousand plus poems that nobody's ever seen, probably will never ever see. You know, but I, I've got those five books out of the three thousand different things that I've done where I'm like, Okay, here, you can have these. Yeah. So do you find that you do that too? Like you have a whole bunch of stuff. It's not that you don't, it's not that you won't release it or anything like that. It's just, you don't, you don't want to because it's not quite what you think anybody else will think it is, I guess. Going yeah, on the have, worst critic type thing. I have a lot of things recorded already or in a, in a, uh, in, uh, the, 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 the day one, it blew my it blew my mind, and I say, oh, that, that, oh, finally, I really did something alive. The day after is really is that is that what I and, and I don't even if I'm not sure I don't even put it out. I have plenty of recording or uh, or just ideas. Sometimes I even when, when I when my phone is full, <laughs> I still. <laughs> white phone and start to record ideas on the I felt that sentence because at the when moment, my phone is full <laughs> exactly because at the moment I'm so convinced that that is gonna be I say oh I, I don't know how it went uh, uh, until now but this thing this is really good and then the, 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 the day a day after I listened to it I said I'm not saying it's not bad I can see that I, I wanted <laughs> to record it it's an idea it's it's fairly, it's very good, but yeah. What I was thinking, what, why, why I thought it could be something. <laughs> it's, it's a good idea, very good idea. I, I, I know a lot of guitarists and musicians. They have really good ideas. Sometimes there, there are some, some guitarists. They have this incredible. Idea, even they are not famous. I have to say, uh, having a lot of pre- friends, oh, musician friends, I've seen a lot of. A lot of very underrated musicians, and I don't know why. I said better than me, but better than people who, who are really famous. I saw sometimes, yeah. I have to be honest. Sometimes there, are, there, are, there, there, there are some people that that you say, okay, it's not super big. You're not super big. I can see why. Mm-hmm. It's, you, you're good, like my piece. What I mentioned, you're good, but but I seen a lot of musicians, and I and I thought, oh. This dude is really, it's really something, and uh, he should be famous. But you know, yeah. uh, we find but, that a lot uh, around here with like our local scene. We have so many great local musicians that are, as far as I'm concerned, they're blowing that. a lot of these guys that are fucking pretty big, putting out their new albums. But their new album sucks dick. Like, but yet 
cross dogs <laughs> down the road here or fucking die sci-fi they're fucking phenomenal Every, everything yeah. they're writing is fucking very good but no one's i don't know like why is why aren't they on the fucking radio <laughs> you know or why aren't they having music yeah, videos exactly. on fucking mtv right well, yeah, this exactly. is a good this is a good way to segue into the question of who's around you that's local that you think us in Canada should be listening to, should hear, should learn about, know about, and promote around here. Ah, uh, yeah, I have a, a couple of group, groups that I have in mind. Um, one group is Kickfist. I, I really like them, even if they they're taking a uh, let's say they are a little bit on uh, um, yeah they they stopped the uh, in. In, in because of the COVID or something, they they recorded like four pieces or something like that, which they are really good. That they they played a lot of in a lot of uh, venue here. They have a lot of gigs and uh, Concord. There's a nice club is Concord Two here in Brighton. But anyway, and uh, their name is Kickfist. I like I like also another group uh, which is called R and Drift. They also are not really famous even if they played everywhere here in london mm-hmm. or here in, uh, in the east Sussex in here in uk and uh, their name is Aaron drift uh they really they are not really famous at all but i, I like it because they uh, this sort of approach which is similar to mine they they they, they their music is basically hard rock but it's quite unusual sometimes they 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 have strange riff uh uh, uh yeah and uh, and on top of and on top of it um they take they, they play really everywhere they play everywhere here and so pe- people i think they know it they know them here but they are not famous i mean they Except from lo- local radio, I don't think big big stages or something like that. But I like it. Kickfist yeah, is uh, is a local group, and uh, really it's really hard rock or heavy metal. I will I would say. Oh, it's, nice. It's really heavy metal, and uh, and the the reason I I like them is not only because it's it it's good if you listen them on them. Uh, to Spotify, you, you can see they are really good. But sometimes you have some groups that they are really, really good in um, in studio. When you yeah. see them live, you say, okay, it's okay. I can see that it's the same thing. But, you know, in studio, you have your own time, settle the sound, uh, have your best shot, and, and so on. And when you see them live, yeah, it's fairly, it's it's good, but it's it didn't blow you, you away. No. I must say that Kick Feast is the other way. I, I even played with them one time, just, just, uh, yeah, one of their pieces. I played with them. And when you s- heard them live or see them live, it's better than in a studio. This is a classic group that in a studio you say, okay, I can see that they're good. When you see them live, you really feel the energy and the, and the skills they have also. They're, mm. uh, very good guitarist. The guitarist change change it to the yeah from time to time, but they always they always had a, yeah very nice guitarist and uh, and the guy I like the the Zach is is his name I I like his voice so I will say those two groups for now but yeah okay no we'll definitely yeah. uh, get them off you later and I'll reach out to them and yeah yeah I will definitely there. check their music out for sure so since since things have shut down a year ago because we're on our anniversary of no you can't leave the house um yeah. how <laughs> to put it politely <laughs> um so how, how like i don't want to talk about the negative part of it because we all yeah. know the negative part of it and it's yeah, just exactly. been rammed down our throats in some way shape or form for the last year so like what are the positivities out of this how has this helped you musically and like where what kind of position has it put you in for when things i don't know what where you guys are at with with like your world opening back up and playing and venues and stuff like that but we're still shut right down so and we've lost 
hundreds, if not thousands of venues across Canada. So like, how has it helped you? And like, where are you guys at with, you know, getting ready to get back out there? Or are you already back out there? No, I'm not already uh, out uh, yet because uh, as easy, as you can see, even here is it's not possible to uh, have gigs or something like that. Maybe in, uh, we will be opening up in the summer, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the positive side is that I have more time. Oh, and uh, it's positive. Let's point. I have more time with myself. Let's say yeah. to this this time explore what is inside than respect what is outside. Let's say right. When we mentioned the painting or the beautiful seaside places or uh, uh, and so which which is good and bad. Good because you really know yourself better. Bad because you have to face. Uh, you, you have to face yourself. You physically. Well, bad because you know yourself better. <laughs> right? Yeah. Is you... ah, I know myself better, and uh, sometimes it's ah, yeah, I know myself better. <laughs> yeah. Because you know, yeah. everyone is yeah, his strength and his uh, and then in their weaknesses. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm. Yeah, it's kind of the same turn of the coin. No matter which way you look at it, you're getting the same result. <laughs> Yeah. I guess it's all perspective, though. It's all about how you you um, change things. Because much like you, I did a lot of um, having to face myself and learning and growing, which is how we ended up where we are today, um, TJ and I. But like, it, it's it's definitely been a journey, and facing myself is definitely. Um, not only made me better in the things I do, but it's made me more humble and more cautious to the things that I maybe don't do, you know? <laughs> so, so like, I can see what you're saying about it, it, it being an inward journey as opposed to what's going on on the outside. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And so. Sometimes, yeah. Oh, I got a good question for you. I noticed you surf, man. <laughs> How long you've been uh, surfing for, bud? <laughs> But I, I, I surf occasionally, uh, sadly, because I uh, the weather here it's not that great. Even if the the real surfers, let's say, they don't care. Even it's yeah. it's freezing, they will they, they will surf anyway. So I surfed a little bit on Portugal. I surfed a little bit in LA when I was in LA uh, oh. on holidays. It was two years ago, I guess, two years ago, and uh, and it was beautiful because it's really hot there and uh yeah oh, well it's fantastic <laughs> exactly. i can see why uh, yeah why, why it's it's a, a place in which you want to be if you like to surf i'm not mm. that great but i'm i'm learning let's say yeah uh i surfed in italy in italy i did more of windsurfing because it all started when i uh, worked in an hotel like was 15 years ago or something like that in a, in a hotel and it was it was an hotel and also like a small village in which you can rent a little apartment oh and you know uh it was there was also entertainment sports music and i was um uh, initially I, I, just because i do like also archery and i I even had uh, a, yeah, that, I don't know if it's still valid because uh, I even had a, a, a um, license for uh, for teaching archery. And then oh. uh, just because <laughs> I I started to work with the, uh, the guy who, who did piano bar at the time it was, uh, I, I started to, to take the music side. And at the end, I was even uh, chief of entertainment. So um, I, I was coordinating the whole area of entertaining the sports and the, the music and the cabaret. And I performed myself, of, of course, because I, I was still uh, not forced, but yes, I still have to perform, with, which I liked, of course. But mm -hmm. I still <laughs> had to perform uh, with this guy. It was Italian pop music. Uh, 
Um, so sometimes it was nice, sometimes it was just we had to play what 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 it was requested or, yeah. or, or what it was popular, and it, and it was okay. I'm not complaining, but um, it started there, and then uh, there I meet I met uh, this guy who worked in uh, who was working in uh, he was the the chief of the uh, water sports center. And he taught me about windsurfing. And then I met another guy there. And I, I was fairly good in windsurfing. Let's say I'm, I'm better in windsurfing. I think it's easier for me. Even mm-hmm. if, yeah, because surfing is, is require a lot of, of different technique. It changes. Uh, it depends on what, what you have. What, and, but windsurfing... Once you get it, more or less, you get it. Maybe you're still a bit clumsy, but or uh, it will take a little bit more to come back where you <laughs> were originally started. But you, you you will figure it out. But then mm-hmm. I, there I met this guy. He was from California, Andrew. He had an amazing life because he was younger than me. I was younger at the time, but he was younger than me. He was a student, so he played basketball and. Uh, Basically, in winter, he was uh, in uh, he was studying in uh, LA and uh, in uh, he was in California surfing all the time. And in summer, he went in Tuscany with this village because oh. part of his family was original from there. So he has this amazing life because he spent like two months there and uh, the rest of the year in uh, California. And he taught me a little, a little bit, a bit the basics of surfing on top on top of it in, in italy you don't have these big waves which is a little bit frustrating but it's also helpful in the, in the beginning because it's you're not that stressed because uh, yeah. yeah but that's a particular point yeah i'm sorry oh especially like la you get fucking 30 foot swells sometimes you know <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah pretty good yeah. wave to catch in that sense like I know here they do a lot of windsurfing off the bay, Georgian Bay and stuff here, but we only get like a three foot swell. You can kind of surf on it, but you're more or less wakeboarding or, or windsurfing here as well, right? Yeah, that that's the same was in Italy. There's a was a particular point was called Le Rocchette. It was a particular uh, a spot uh, in uh, in this part of Tuscany in which you got. Be- Decent wave, let's say, or, or at least for what you can have in Italy, let's say, because mm-hmm. it's the ocean is a closed and closed sea. But uh, and then I learned the basic. I'm still not a good surfer, but from time to <laughs> time, if I'm traveling and I'm trying to, I was in Portugal uh, last summer. I uh, found a place uh, in which they did surfing, uh, Portimao. Uh, it's, it's, it's a good spot here in Europe. is a is, is a good spot. I see. I see. You know, I saw, seen a lot of kids, but really small kids. They were awesome, awesome man. They were awesome. They just. I, I think. I, I thought they are born on a. They were born on a surfboard. Surfboard. It's. it's oh, awesome. like yeah. They were just natural. That's awesome. Ooh, natural. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> And of course, in America, in Los Angeles, I, I see the best, the, the a lot of good surfers. Let's say. Oh yeah. Oh, I bet, I bet. So where, um, where else have you been? Uh, I lived in, as as I mentioned before, I lived in Sweden, in Stockholm, for one year. I, yeah. I can even talk a little bit of Swedish uh, because my wife, she's we, she's originally from Russia, and and uh, but. When, when she was a kid, she moved in Sweden. So she grew up in, in Sweden, basically. So Right on. She's, she's Swedish, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I lived one year in Sweden. Uh, I teach guitar there. It was, it was a nice period. I had a lot of students there. Didn't play as much as I, as I wanted. I was more uh, uh, working on uh, teaching kids or something like that, which helped right. me also the process of learning the language let's say it was fun really cool yeah, yeah. i have to say it was That's a particular awesome. year minus 18 for uh four or five months 
That's not uh, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but I live in Canada, this. so whatever. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. It's not a big deal for you then. Yeah. Yeah, so, I yeah it gets pretty well. It, not so much here in Niagara Falls, but in some areas of Canada, it gets pretty fucking cold. <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. I know I, li I lived in Newfoundland for a year out on the east coast of Canada, and like, snow gets pretty high sometimes it gets like three four or five feet high and so in some areas they don't even plow the roads because the snow gets so high <laughs> so yeah, there was was something like that in sweden because it was particularly snowy winter and uh, yep. yeah I, we had snow for yeah from the beginning of november till uh, like april or something which is unusual even for them and uh, the beginning was wow. After a while, I, I, I was seeing white, white all the time. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Snow in May guy, is not appealing. <laughs> no, no. Okay. But the, the summer <laughs> guy is the best one. It's still not. It was warm, particularly warm summer when I was there, which is not usual as well. We had thirty degrees for uh, July and August, which is. It never happens. For people from there tell me, dude, you're really lucky. It, it, it never, never <laughs> happened before. And, yeah. uh, and uh, when you're walking and it's 11 o'clock or uh, court by, yeah, court, uh, f uh, it's almost midnight and there's still some light. 11.30 was definitely daylight. And you're oh, still wow. walking and it's fairly, it's not Ital Italy hot, but Enough, enough, fairly enough. Mm -hmm. And you can walk until uh, late in the night and it's still, uh, there's still light. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Beautiful sunset there as well. Amazing. Beautiful nature. The, the sky seems very far away. I don't know. Forever. I, I don't know if it's my, uh, it, it's just something with me or uh, the, there's this landscape with those uh, trees, there's those pines, I guess. And this is beautiful. Yeah, you guys got the big pine forest over there, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I even miss it. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I miss Italy, of course, but for what regards the family. Or, but when I think Sweden, <laughs> I really miss <laughs> Sweden and not just the people who are living there, which I, I, I love, by the way. There's my wife's sister, my wife's mother or father. Right. Yes, so uh, there's friends, of course. And, uh, but I, I really miss the place, even if it was freezing during the winter time. But yeah, I, I really miss some some places in in Sweden. Yeah, like the area itself versus like the people that are there and stuff like that. Yeah, p p Swedish pe people on top of it, they are they are kind. They are not immediately open like Italian. Italian are mo moody, no. but uh, but they are fairly. Straightforward. You say you you meet them, and then you're their friends or not. The negative yeah. side, they change their mind even in the same. They have. They, 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 it's easy for them to change. You say say something wrong, and sometimes you say, especially in the south where my mom come from, uh, they are really warm and open. Uh, but it, in the same way, it's easy to say get in touch with them it's mm. it, it's easy to uh get get yeah yeah to, it's easy to connect but it's also easy to uh disconnect disconnect yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. in sweden that process is really long you you do you really have to gain someone trust and then you're okay you have you don't have so many friends especially maybe if you come from outside which is fairly difficult everywhere even in italy i'm oh. not saying that uh, yeah when you when you are the outsider it, it takes a lot because the barrier the language yep. it's not even uh, it's not a racist or something or nothing like that it's just no. because someone is talks to you in a way that he it takes a little bit more effort to, right, to make right. a conversation and send you don't even know why but you have the tendency to to speak with another one with in which with with another one and you can relate a little bit more mm -hmm. or it's it's faster connection but with Swedish people are really nice really correct yeah i have to say 
they're good people. In England, yeah. they're in the middle because they're a little bit more warmer. They're a little bit yeah. warmer, sort of like, I won't say like Italian, but they're, they're definitely warmer. Uh, oh, sometimes they don't like to, what, what I discovered in the uh, UK, they, they don't like the confrontation. They, for example, if I, if I say, oh, if, I, if someone gives me this pen and, and I don't like it, I, I tend to say, oh, thank you. Uh, but if you, someone re, re, really asks me, it is your favorite pen, is it, if it's not my favorite pen, I, I will tell you, listen, dude, I have to be honest, you gave me the <laughs> pen, and I, I, and I thank you, but I like it, but it's not my favorite pen, because it's not. The English right, tend right. to avoid the confrontation. They, they mm. will tell you, oh, this is brilliant, this is the, my favorite pen, and then <laughs> you will see it in a video. <laughs> <laughs> but not that because they the are they're mean, because they, it's difficult to them to they don't want to create uh like a Tension. friction yeah mm -hmm. it's, yeah it's a genuine way to it's the, their genuine way to to keep the things cool yeah mm -hmm. especially if you're their friends so they don't they don't mean they don't mean something they, they don't do it because they mean something bad or something it's just they wait. The Italian are straightforward, which is sometimes it's even uh, it's yeah. even considered impolite for someone because yeah yeah because where, whereas like straightforward yeah yeah whereas like the English are more like uh, passively polite yeah exactly you know? I can say yeah 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 if they, if they don't like if they like oh oh uh, a good example it could be this one. Uh, um, I, if you if you if you do something really good, they will tell you something like, uh, "Oh, it, it is it, it's brutal, man," or something like that. If they, they oh. tell you the word like "brilliant" uh, mm -hmm. or "amazing," then you know it. Shit. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> no, <laughs> you can say whatever you want on our show, man. If you hear the word yeah, yeah. brilliant, that means I don't like it. If you hear the word, I like this, or it's, it's yeah. good shit. I know what then, you're then saying. I know exactly what you're saying. We do that here in Canada, too. <laughs> yeah. That means if you heard the word shit, man, that you have more, more uh, let's say, um, chance of being... Uh, of, have done something successful in their eyes, yep. then they, they tell you brilliant. If they tell you brilliant, <laughs> keep, walking. Good, yeah. keep walking. Yeah. <laughs> keep walking. <laughs> That's funny. So if you could play on any stage anywhere in the world, where would it be that you haven't played yet that you want to play? Oh, That's a good question. And I really nice. didn't thought about it. Uh, I know. I pretend like I have the questions when we start the show, and then I no, throw in these nice... like, "Oh no, how do I answer this?" <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a nice, it's a brilliant actually. Or now you make me feel me. It came to my mind. Of course, Wembley Stadium. Mm. Yeah, uh, that's a big one. My, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I see, I see what I'm talking about when I'm when, when I'm when I'm saying that, and. Um, um, and uh, can you suggest me something? Because I know that uh, a, a lot of me, uh, great musicians play. For example, I know that Santana played in a, in a, in a place in Canada. I don't oh. remember now the name, but it was a cool venue. That would have oh, been yeah, There's a bunch of them here. I can tell you exactly what, which was the place. But it was, I think it was I, Madison Square Gardens he played. No, yeah, Madison yeah. Square Gardens in New York. That's in New York. Oh, it is? Oh, fuck, see what I know. Yeah. <laughs> TJ is a world traveler, but I know where everything is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I've there's... Um... There, I know he, he, I, I, I'll tell you later. I, uh, I'll look into it. It was okay, that perfect. Santana, because I remember watching a video Santana, and I watched this venue, and, uh, and I thought, oh, yeah. That, that, if, if I grow up, I want to be there. When I grow up, I you haven't grown up either? <laughs> That's fantastic. No. That makes three of us. 
yeah. yeah, but yeah, but it was a cool venue. And Wembley Stadium because you know I have been, because I'm a big fan of Queen. Uh, it's of course a, a, a Wembley Stadium is yeah. Uh, uh, that's that's yeah, a... yeah. Thinking uh, that you're walking the same uh, on the same stage in which Freddie Mercury performed or Brian May played. Uh, Could you imagine? Uh, yeah, it's, it, it would blew my mind, really. <laughs> my ten-year-old belts Queen like she's known Freddie Mercury personally for years. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, my kid's a good singer, but when she's, man, she's been listening to Queen since, actually, this is going to swing right into a question. She's been listening to Queen since she was inside my stomach. That's like, and I don't know why we chose Queen, but we did. We chose Queen. And then later on, she became a major fan of Iron Maiden. And that was actually the first concert I, I took her to. Yeah, so Maiden. when she was nine years old, I took her to Iron Maiden. Um, so on that note, what's the first that was actually a pun without realizing it what's yeah. the first <laughs> recollection of music that you have what's the first like the very first thing you ever remember where you're like oh this is music this is awesome ah, i remember that specifically it was my father and i was listening to two things the beatles and vivaldi yes this record he had this record for strangely, my, my father had a, a, a recording of G, Jimi Hendrix, I think. Yeah, Jimi Hendrix. And uh, he played, maybe he didn't play that much because through the years he changes his tastes and uh, he went more for the classical guitar. And uh, he, I won't say he rejected his... <laughs> Youth, yeah, but he listened. Mm -hmm. But definitely, when I was little, he still was listening to some Jimi Hendrix recording, Beatles, and also, of course, classical, because he liked classical as well. But for some reason, and you will think it's strange, I wasn't blow, it wasn't Jimi Hendrix that blew my mind, but it was the Beatles. And I remember having, like, I, being, like, four years old and listening uh to those beautiful uh uh let it be or uh other yeah, like iconic you know, yeah, really songs song. and, mm -hmm. and, and, and of course i didn't speak that words because a four years kid cannot speak that word but the feeling yeah. i had in my mind is more like a, an animal way of feel the things that 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 then then an adult that can uh, really uh actually think the words when uh, when he feels something but my feeling was like something like oh is this music this is amazing how can they do mm -hmm. that I, I couldn't i couldn't uh i i, I was uh, amazing by the fact that human beings could do that it was one mm -hmm. of the first uh, recording and uh, vivaldi of course la primavera i remember la primavera vivaldi it was one of the very, very first things I heard. It was, uh, yeah, on vinyl because he had, still had <laughs> vinyl from the when he was younger, and um, and uh, yeah, Beatles vinyls make a huge comeback best. right now. Yeah, <laughs> I was blow away. It's like when you are uh, when you're older and you fall in love, you still think into that. In that case, it's a, it was a song, but. And you still think by the day you're doing your things and then you got distracted because you think back to what you hear. And uh, yeah, sometimes when I heard about a particular piece of music, I won't say that I had the butterfly in my stomach for the whole day, but I really was thinking about it. I, I, I thought, how can, how can you, those guys can do that? But I, can I do something? Or can other people do something like that? It's, mm -hmm. it's incredible what what human beings can do at that, that no. point I, I was little and i didn't know that human beings can do a lot of awful of <laughs> other stuff yes as well but you know i was i was and i still sometime of course i i'm less naive now and uh, mm -hmm. it's always but some, i'm still um 
I'm still uh, amazed by new things, and I'm still uh, uh, sometimes I'm still even um, how can I say uh, when you are uh, I didn't expect I, I listen to things that I didn't expect, and I say, oh, I never thought of that. This guy thought mm -hmm. of this thing in music, and it's brilliant. <laughs> this guy is brilliant. I, I can can come up with idea or this. This girl, he he arranged this uh, this kind of music. Look at this chord. Or look at this sound of the guitar. It's so bright. It's so full. It's so how, how can she she made that? I I wanna I wanna play with my gear all day and try to find something similar like to what she did, for example. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, you know it's uh, but I remember when I was a kid, Beatles, it, it, they, they, which. If you will say, of course, it's it's Beatles, you know. <laughs> but yeah. for me, it was something like uh, like magic. It was like not something like uh, not something like a professional would do, but something like a magician would do. Something like mag magical, yeah. Something that is not from our world, let's say. Yeah, yeah. And I, I know it seems uh, okay, yeah. a little bit naive, but I was a kid, and uh, yeah, of course. I'll be right back. I've got to let this dog out before he makes a mess on my floor. <laughs> if you want to ask a quick question? I'll be right back. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. You just kind of put me on the spot, TJ. Like, I mean, most of my questions just come naturally. I can't just be like, hey, ask something. So, um, I don't know. Like, what, do you, what else do you do in your spare time? Like, like, or I, yes. I mean, I don't imagine you have much spare time. Like, you're, you no. sound just as busy as myself. So, yeah, you no, know. but you know, I will always find a, uh, a way on Sunday to. I, I like to fix bike, motorcycles, with I, which I shouldn't. I should practice and become a better musician, a, a better guitarist. But uh, I like to fix uh, bikes. Um, I have two bikes. I have a, a Honda Hornet, which I'm still fixing, by the way, still. And uh, a little bike. It's 125. It's a, a still an Honda. It's a CBR. And uh, I even I, this this bike has even its own name. It's called Mica. Mica the bike. <laughs> oh, nice. I nice. I, I actually I want to open an Instagram account and go <laughs> on uh, on this bike, Micah the bike. Oh, I will call I'll it follow Instagram. it, Micah the bike. Yeah, you give me an idea. Today. <laughs> I'll follow it. I'll definitely follow it for sure. Skating That's amazing. awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. So you put no, me on I the spot, seen, TJ, um, but I still pulled it yeah. off. So man. <laughs> Checking your no, Facebook no, she's out. Good. She's good. I see that you're uh, fixing bikes and. and mainly crotch rockets and stuff too, or do you work on uh, all bikes? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I fix about more, more fix about the aesthetic things. And for the, for what regards the engine or something like that, I you know a friend of mine uh, and I will rely in the future for uh, this other project. Actually, I have two other projects that I'm doing. One is really <laughs> almost hopeless, but I, I think I can pull it off. If I'm lucky, I can pull it off. And uh, because one is as a misfiring cylinder or something like that, that my friend explained me what we can do and when he will be here, because now he doesn't live anymore in Brighton, but he's, mm -hmm. he's a biker, it's a proper biker, not a, a charlatan like me. And uh, it's, he, he knows about engine and stuff. Um, little bit better than me if i if i have a if i can clean a carburetor for an old bike i can do it or if i can but or by except from that something on the engine which is really complicated or a huge machinery to uh i don't know uh give the new life of a on a piston or a cylinder that it's better to call him because he knows his stuff but yeah, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. In France, you know, it won't be, I won't be spending a uh, fortune. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not and even a couple of hour. years. It would be <laughs> to the for for the help. Yeah, because mm -hmm. he likes it. He enjoys it. Like, it's like me. It's like to playing with the bike, with the engines and stuff. Yeah. 
No, that's and great. So, right? <laughs> Skating a bit. Skateboard a bit. Which oh, I'm yeah. Not, I used to longboard. But I still have a, I, I had a new board, a new skateboard. My wife gave me as a present, but I'm still owning a, an old, uh, an old uh, uh, board from the 90s. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> pa yeah, Power Peralta, it's Tony Guerrero. It's the beautiful uh, uh, board because it has this knife, this dagger on the, on the back of the board. And it's like fluo, uh, this fluo orange uh, color. And it's, oh. it's really 90s. It's really, it's really cool and still working, it's working condition. It's oh, wow. I still prefer that old uh, board <laughs> to, the, to the new skateboard. But I can say it loud because my wife gave me Oh, that. that's, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite skateboard is my, my wife uh, skating. Yeah. <laughs> we won't yeah, tell anybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah <the color>. <laughs> <laughs> and, Go ahead, uh, TJ. Yeah. Oh, let's no, see. I'm sorry. You continue what you were saying, dear. I didn't, I didn't hear you continue. No, skateboard, basically speak skateboards, kendo, and bikes. Yeah. Nice. Eh? Busy <laughs> right on. They hope it's <laughs> those for now. Mm -hmm. Right yeah. on. Awesome. Awesome. That's fantastic. No, uh, it's been an honor to have you on today, man. Fuck you. You're a great guest. Uh, Absolutely. I really do like your music. I have gone through a lot of your stuff. And uh, I'm going to post a couple things up from your Facebook, from your music up onto the channel here this afternoon. Thank and, you. Uh, Thank that you. way people will... Um, where would yeah. people find your music? Like, where, where's the best spot? Do you have a link? Do you have a channel? Uh, yeah. Spotify. Spotify. I'm on Apple Music. Uh, also, uh, other pla basically all the platform. Uh, but for some reason, uh, yeah, yeah. Spotify is okay. It's not, not big following, but yeah, Apple Music is okay. Hey, Apple Music and Spotify. Let's say, let's cut it. Yeah, cut it down. Okay. Are you on yeah. YouTube? Okay. Yeah, no, on, I'll, uh... on YouTube. There's not that much okay. on YouTube, and I don't don't follow. I, even if I should, because YouTube is a is a thing now. On Instagram, yeah, I have something like, yeah, yeah I'm some so, some post that uh, in which there's this link uh, on my pieces on Spotify. And on Spotify, I I have high iCloud also, in which there are some pieces that, yeah. In, on iCloud is, I think, SoundCloud. Sorry, SoundCloud. SoundCloud yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a, a piece which is not recorded professionally because it was alive, is called Compassionate, and I never had the chance to record it because it's one of the pieces you had. Yeah, now we get it. It's one of the pieces <laughs> you mentioned it before. I compose it. I even played live before releasing. I played live in Greenwich one time, and I, another, and in Kensington Olympia here in London, which is a nice venue. It was a vegan vegetarian festival, but it was huge. It was pretty nice. So yeah, I have occasion also. Sometimes I go there with singers, or but if I. If I can, I also have the possibility to play some instrumentals, which uh, which is, yeah, which instrumental is a little bit difficult with big audience because uh, unless you're Satriani or Steve Vai, of course. But, yeah. but uh, I think it went well there because I had a lot of uh, positive uh, feedbacks. And I played this piece and uh, I never recorded professionally for the main, the main reason is what you mentioned before, I thought, yeah, it seemed great to me. Back in the day, I thought, oh, this is a great piece. This is one of my best. And then mm -hmm. I lost, lost the interest. And uh, now I, I, I think I can't even play it. I can even, I, yeah, maybe I can play the beginning and then I would get lost because I haven't played in five years and uh, something like that. <laughs> But it's, bit, it's, it's, eh? not, it's not an awful piece. Of course, you will say it's your piece. What well, well, you can say, it. but it's on my SoundCloud. <laughs> it's called Compassionate. And, yeah, uh, I'll be checking that out. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's a if live. It allows piece. me to share it, then I'll get it up on the page as well, so the the peeps can 
hear it, check it out, and then they can follow the link and, and find your stuff, right? So that's yes. perfect. And this is played with the nylon string, nylon classical guitar. I have an also another piece like that, which I like more, which is crackling of the old fireplace. It's, pre- it's uh, actually on Spotify. And it's oh. an instrumental piece on a classical guitar with the classical, proper classical uh, finger picking, nylon string, uh, uh, as I was trained many years ago in Italy. And it was influenced by this composer, which is fairly known among uh, classical music guitarists, was Agustin Barrios, was not famous like Segovia or John Williams or other classical guitarists, but he, he composed amazing music. Uh, Augustin Barrios. He was a. He was from. Uh, it was Latin American for sure. Yeah, and uh, you, in this piece, it, my piece, it was inspired by it, its music, uh, and it was with the tremolo and classical guitar. It's very. Uh, yeah, it's very classical uh, piece of music, but. Uh, I still like it. It's one of my pieces, and the, this one, on the other hand, it's it's a piece I like. Uh, sometimes you, you you like your stuff, and you say you think, oh, it's it's wonderful. Sometimes you don't like it, or you thought it was good, like the piece I mentioned before, and then you don't like it anymore. I still like that piece. Could be recorded better, maybe yes, but the general concept. Actually, I would like to give this piece someone else to see how, how it's up. but now now i'm having this epiphany right now with you <laughs> i will in an ideal world i would like to um, contact some guitarist some musician maybe even better than me hopefully uh, to see how my piece uh, sounds in other hands or to see my music uh, with some other eyes let's say let you see mm-hmm. or, uh, have uh, some other... i would like to give them completely the freedom of change everything and to see how it sounds just to for the sake of curiosity let's say to see what what it can be pulled off yeah yeah that, that you gave me an, you gave me an <laughs> idea i think this 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 particular podcast for me it was uh very successful because not only right on your present right yeah when yeah. curiosity and creativity collide <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah. because uh, the fact that you ask things it brings out things uh, yeah and uh, and I start start to, to get ideas new ideas <laughs> no yeah, that's great. Well, good. You. good i i'm glad our no. energy could rub off on you that's awesome yeah. That's awesome. Uh, definitely an honor to have you on today. I know, oh, absolutely. Uh, you're busy man. He was right? my my having me today. Really. Oh yeah. Oh, it so was that, wonderful. In the future, we'll when you get some more shit coming out, and uh, we'll fuck, we'll have you on again, man. Of course. Definitely. Maybe, um, maybe I'll do well, a UK tour, and I'll come and we'll sit in Wait. person, have a few beers, and do an interview that way. Yeah, that, that's yeah. I like. That's I like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can see uh... And you should come yeah. because you know we have three hundred uh, pubs here in uh, Brighton. They say one Still pub for, uh, for each year. Yeah, for each day of the year. Perfect. I'm. I'll be there in a couple months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once the world opens up. <laughs> I'm on my way. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, we'll definitely be in touch. I'll um, I'll I'll get in contact with you about uh, Sofa City Sounds, which is something else that we do around here. And um, yeah, we'll keep in touch for things that you're up to and things you're doing, and we'll get a profile or a bio written about you, and we'll go. Yeah. We'll we'll move on from there and 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 see what happens. So yeah, it's absolutely been a blast, man. Thanks so much oh, for today. Great. I know uh, this morning was a bit of a shit show on our side with the technology. The way fuck it was last night, Whatever. it wouldn't run at all. You know, we had <laughs> two days camera. in a row. <laughs> yeah, this it's morning, so but it worked out great. Everything went smooth today. So fuck, yeah. thank you, thanks again yeah. so much, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, and on that note, uh, 
um, we'll close this off. And uh, we'll be back in the next couple of days, I suppose, with another interview of some sort. Yeah. So yeah. it was wonderful to have you, man. Thank you. It's, yeah, thank you, yeah, Jerry. Thanks to you for having me. Nice to meet oh, you guys. You were awesome. Definitely. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.